Just as a friendly reminder, you can find all of the products featured in today's video and many more at Dan's Dinosaurs. Dan offers top-notch customer service, some incredible deals on new arrivals, and peace of mind when ordering items from outside of the States. Remember, if you do decide to order from him, be sure to mention in the comment box at checkout that your good friend Killer Shrew fan sent you. It's a big help to the channel, and I do appreciate it. Now with that out of the way, let's get to the video. Hello everyone and welcome back to Killer Shrew Fans Killer Toy Reviews. For my first video of 2021, I know I'm a slacker, leave me alone, I'm going to be doing a big ol' unboxing for you. Just a big ol' unboxing of a box that's big. A big ol' video. This massive box came in today from Dan's Dinosaurs after some of the fastest international shipping I have ever seen. Seriously, I got word that this shipped on the 12th and it's here now. I honestly can't believe it was that fast. I'm sure you all saw the thumbnail, so you already know that this box contains some long overdue figures that I am very excited to be adding to my collection. So without further ado, let's get to it and crack this thing open. Oh, I'm I'm seeing beauty. So first up, because of course it is, we have Domingo the Carnotaurus. I swear I did not plan this. Domingo here was the first reveal of the new year and my first official dinosaur-related purchase of 2021. And boy, oh boy, did we start off on a high note with this one, guys. This figure looked incredible in the promo images and still does against the standard white PNSO box there. I'm anxious to see if the final product is anywhere near as lovely, so let's get this this one open. Like all of PNSO's offerings, this one comes with a little booklet containing a kid-friendly informative story, but we're not here for that, are we? No, we want the Carnotaurus! And there is Domingo, looking absolutely incredible out of the box. Let's give you guys a nice 360 degree view of my new Carnotaurus, shall we? Yeah, this thing's awesome. I know PNSO is infamous for their final products looking a bit underwhelming in comparison to the promotional images, but I honestly think Domingo turned out pretty close to what we were promised. I love the tiger aesthetics on this thing. It's so striking and fitting for a predator, and that mouth opens so wide, it's so cool. You will notice I am using that plastic support rod PNSO have been including for their theropods. Domingo does stand without it, but it is a little precarious on mine, so I'm not going to risk it. But other than the shaky feet, this figure is amazing upon first impressions. Next up, we have Ichu the Chianzusaurus. Ichu or Ashu? <laughs> I kill myself. I'm not entirely sure on the pronunciation, but I'm going to call him Ashu because of the long nose and sneezing and you, you get it, you get it. I'm, 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 I think I'm funny. Anyway, this was a reveal that dropped right around Christmas and I knew right away what I would be spending some of my holiday cash on. After Safari LTD's underwhelming offering, I was ready to jump at the next opportunity to get a long snouted Tyrannosaurid. And this one looked incredible. So let's go ahead and bust it open to see how it turned out. Again, we've got a little booklet all about Ashu, but who needs that when you have the figure itself? And there is Ashu, and as you can see, he stands just fine for the moment without that rod and looks 
absolutely fantastic doing so. The sculpt and paint on this thing are phenomenal. Maybe a little less lifelike than the promo images, but impressive in hand nonetheless. It's a standout simply because of the cool tones PNSO used to color it. So many of their figures have been warm or earthy in coloration, but this one has a unique design to the color, and I am loving it. Next up, we have Rosanna the Mira Gaia. This is another immediate standout for me amongst the plethora of releases from last year. Their first Stegosaur didn't really grab my attention, but this one was hard to look past. The striking treatment of the plates, both in color and size, immediately grabbed me and hasn't let go yet. I still think this design looks fantastic, and I'm excited to see it in hand, so let's get to it. As always, we've got the booklet. And there is Rosanna, and yeah, she is an absolute beauty to behold. Everything about her is just long. The neck's long, the plates are long, the spikes of the Thagomizer are long, and it's all been saddled with that striking color palette of yellows, creams, and oranges. She's definitely not the biggest thing PNSO has ever made, but I have a feeling that when she's on my shelf, my eyes are going to be quickly drawn to her because of how striking her design and colors are. Next up, we have Isaac the Sorapelta in this tiny little box here. Itty bitty living space. I don't quite remember when it was that Isaac was revealed, but I do remember getting a sinking feeling in my stomach because that's when I first realized there was no end in sight for PNSO's upcoming figures. They just kept coming and coming and each one seemed better and better and Isaac was no exception. I loved the detail and the palette felt both natural and eye-catching at the same time. After being a Bit underwhelmed by the final presentation of the Bori Lapelta, I'm interested to see how this one turned out. And there is Isaac, and of course, Isaac's little booklet. But there's no time for that now. We must free Isaac from the plastic prison that encases him. And there he is, and I gotta say, first impressions? This paint job does a much better job than Gavin's at highlighting all of the amazing sculptural detail on this figure. It's certainly a downgrade from the promo images, but it's well done enough for me to still like it. And yeah, the sculpt on this thing is just, oh, it's incredible. A wash or two really would have sold it for me, but I'll take it for what it is, I suppose. Second to last, it's Achi the Cenoceratops. This one was exciting to me because earlier in the year, PNSO gave us a baby version of the Cenoceratops, also named Achi, but then decided to offer a fully grown specimen as well. It's rare we get hatchling dinosaur models, and even more rare when we get grown versions of said hatchlings. Even if we don't know what an infant dinosaur looks like, it's fun to guess and pose them near each other for a little growth cycle effect. So let's go ahead and open this one and see how Achi has grown. And there is Achi staring at us through the plastic, along with his booklet, of course, but we want to talk about the dinosaur itself. 
So the first thing I love about this figure is how it differs from the hatchling. The striking markings on the frill that were absent from the baby really gives the impression of a mature male specimen, and that pairs well with this sort of rutting pose PNSO have given this figure. One thing that is kind of annoying though is that some of his paint seems to have been scraped off by the plastic protector. You can see it there on the plastic. It's a little harder to make out the scuffs on the figure itself under my review lights, but they are there. It's nothing major, and at least it's on the side I won't be looking at, but it is annoying to say the least. This is the third of the new PNSO offerings I've received with paintware right out of the gate, and given the price, I just don't think that should be an issue. But beyond that, I will say, I'm liking this model a lot. And now for the main event, it's the Big Kahuna himself, emphasis on big, the dummy thick, Tyrant Lizard King, Wilson the Tyrannosaurus Rex, although if you ask me, his name should have been Aaron to go with the T-Rex hatchling we got back when we thought it was going to be an easy year from PNSO. But I digress, I am so excited to see the museum line packaging for this figure. I love PNSO's presentations for their figures, no matter what the scale or line, it's some of the best packaging I've ever seen, but the museum boxes are the cream of the crop in my eye. The stark white background really emphasizes the figure within and gives it a premium look. They're so gorgeous to look at that I often try to incorporate the museum boxes into my displays wherever I can. But listen to me rambling on about boxes, you all want to see Chubby Wilson, don't you? Well then, let's do this! Now Wilson also comes with a booklet, but these museum ones usually have more to offer than just a kid's story, so I will definitely be reading that eventually. But now, for the moment you've all been waiting for... It now what? Just kidding, here's the actual unboxing. And there is the updated Wilson, and wow, this thing looks incredible, and check it out, it stands! I mean, I've heard from others that theirs stands fine at first too, so I'll definitely be using the support rod just to be on the safe side, but wow, this is the T-Rex I have been thirsting for, and after all of that waiting, it does not disappoint. The sculptural details are amazing, the paint job looks great, and I am just so happy to have a chonky Rex to stomp across my shelves. Unfortunately, it isn't all perfect. I'm sure many of you saw that Dino Scream's new Wilson came missing a tongue, and mine is not without its mouth issues. You'll see that whenever I try to close the mouth, it just sort of floats back to that halfway open position. Same goes for if I try to open it, and that's because... The joint on mine is fixed in place. Yeah, it doesn't move. I tried running it under hot water at first and noticed some give, and then I realized that that movement is only happening because the plastic is breaking. It might be hard to see on camera, but there is a massive split in the plastic around the joint, both inside and outside of the mouth. So I guess these new Wilson figures just have some bad quality control when it comes to the mouths, and on a 70 or so dollar figure, that's just not acceptable. You all know me, I'm an even-tempered guy for the most part, but that really ticked me off when I opened it up and realized I could only move the jaw because it's breaking off. This was a pricier figure I highly anticipated and waited a bit to get, and then when I finally do, this happens. Still, that doesn't take away from how good the figure looks overall, and I am excited to have it, but I will be messaging around to see what can be done about this, because I'm I'm not gonna let this that slide, it's too big of an issue on a pricier figure. I wanna be able to make him roar, dang it! And there you have it guys and gals, six new PNSO dinosaurs from their 2020 to 2021 lineup are now here to grace my shelves. With these taken care of, I think I'm only missing six of the other reveals at this point, but none of those were high on my priority list, so I'm feeling quite content at the moment. 
Just want to say another huge thank you to Dance Dinosaurs for sending these over, and so fast and secure to boot. I'll definitely be ordering more PNSOs from him down the line. It's easily been the best experience I've had getting these new figures in. As far as these six go, though, I'm loving each of them in hand and am quite excited to make some in-depth reviews of each for you guys. Drop a comment down below letting me know which one you want to see me take a look at first. Although I think we all know which one I'm actually going to wind up taking a look at first. Anyway guys, thank you so much for tuning into this unboxing video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope to see you again soon when I start taking a look at all of these figures and more. Until then, stay safe out there. Killer Shrew fan, out.